Namaste and greetings. I, Nena Agarwal, researcher at Empiri, Impact and Policy Research Institute, Prabhav Ebam Niti, Anusandhan Sansthan, Nai Dilli, extend my warmest welcome to you all to Empiri, hashtag web policy talk. Today, we are gathered for a special talk on a socio-economic analysis of health-seeking behavior of women in an urban area with special reference to their employment status by Dr. Lakshmi Priya. This session is organized by IMPRI Gender Impact Studies, GISC, under its series, The State of Gender Equality, Hashtag Gender Gap. The session will be chaired by Professor Vibhuti Patel. Professor Vibhuti is visiting distinguished professor at Empiri and former professor, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, PIS, Mumbai. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Namaste. And with the permission of Professor Vibhuti, I would like to introduce the gathering. Yes, Naina, please include, uh, introduce all the panelists. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. I feel privileged to introduce eminent speaker of the session, Dr. Lakshmi Priya. Dr. Priya is currently an independent researcher. Earlier, ma'am, was a researcher coordinator at Iris Knowledge Foundation for 11 years. And in that capacity, Ma'am has anchored projects of Tata Trust, Gates Foundation. Ma'am was also in the editorial production team for Unhabitat Youth Fund Project. Ma'am has received PhD from Mumbai School of Economics and Public Policy, University of Mumbai. Here, her area of interest are gender, health financing, health, health-seeking behavior, aging, and gender. We welcome you, ma'am. We have esteemed discussion today, Professor N. Mani Mekalai. Professor Mani Mekalai is professor at Department of Women's Studies, coordinator, Rusa Social Science in Bharti Darshan University, Tiruchirappalli, Dr. Suchita Krishna Prashad, ma'am, was former associate professor and head of department of economics at Elphinstone College, Mumbai. Professor Manisha Karne, Professor Manisha is director at Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar International Research Center. She is also professor at Mumbai School of Economics and Public Policy, University of Mumbai. We welcome you all to this session. Now, we look forward to learning from our esteemed gathering. And without any further ado, I would like Professor Vibhuti Patel to start the session with her opening remarks and start the proceeding further. Over to you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you and very good evening. The esteemed participants and my panelists, I greet you, Dr. Lakshmi Priya, today's uh, special uh, lecturer, and also our discussants, Professor Anne Mani McLeay, uh, Dr. Suchita Krishna Prasad, and Professor Manisha Karne. We are really fortunate to have three very veteran, seasoned economists, because in this panel, all five are economists, chairperson, speaker, and the discussants are economists, uh, with specialization in development economics and also the gender economics. So health-seeking pattern of Indian women has always been a challenge for policymakers because of the associated myriad factors like poor status in the economy, women's subordinate status in the society, irrespective of the class background, women uh, face uh, the neglect and exclusion. Uh, large majority of women are poor, 
and the vulnerability are, uh, of women are very high. India is known to have an extremely high maternal mortality rate. Even the Africa has now, now had a better performance uh, after the MDGs. And uh, lack of knowledge about the uh, modern health uh, care services. Uh, last three decades of researches in our country has shown that right from the time of health for all by 2000 AD, uh, that was the uh, presentation that was made by the United in the United Nations by uh, our then Prime Minister Madam Indira Gandhi, uh, where the aim of health for all uh, that was uh, 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 proclaimed. But what we see is the gender and health seeking behavior. They have a very very problematic. Uh, issues. The way in which gender shapes health seeking and access to health uh, can, and depending on the social and cultural context, it can work out positively as well as negatively uh, for either gender. So uh, the, sun, the culture of sun preference, such a culture of seeing man as a breadwinner, the whole priority, intra-household care and concern and the resources being unequally distributed, I think we need to situate women's health-seeking behavior in this overall framework of uh, this kind of subordination and exclusion that women face. Social, social and economic empowerment of women remains a so crucial to their health and well-being because if you have economic empowerment, if you have a social empowerment, if you have a decision-making power, then I think uh, it also changes. We have seen recently in the pandemic also that in spite of state-sponsored vaccination program, we saw vaccine gap between uh, a gender-based vaccine gap. Even going from home to the uh, 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 vaccine center, that was a problem for large majority of women. While men could easily go, boys could easily go and take their vaccination. So it is very important to aim at gender e equitable health programs uh, for seeing that uh, women's health agenda can be executed. World Health Organization's constitution says, and I quote, the highest attainable standard of health as a fundamental right of every human being. And uh, why women are uh, uh, left out of this fundamental right. So what kind of a family system do you have, whether you are in a nuclear family or joint family, whether you have a social support network, what are the cultural forces uh, which allow you to, to either seek modern medicine or not, environmental conditions, political systems, uh, and also the uh, kind of uh, whether you have a uh, your political system promotes commercialization of health or it sees universalization of health. I think that also is responsible for health seeking behavior. Innumerable studies done by the Center for Inquiry into Health and Allied Themes in the urban context, in Mumbai, in a rural context, in a peri-urban context have also shown a drastic health inequity and the differential uh, behavior when it comes to health seeking. Intersectional vulnerabilities faced by women of different sociocultural groups economic and economic status play a dominant role in the kind of quality of uh, kind of healthcare and the quality of healthcare that women can access. When women fall ill, the household postpones going to the health center, use home remedies, more so many studies and even the community-based organizations and NGOs and civil society organizations, they are also reporting. Girls' ill health is largely remain unattended even in the middle class homes. Women who are employed have some say in seeking health, uh, seeking health care facilities that demand health expenditure. What, wherever the public health system is able to provide quality care, women of all age groups benefit. That also we have noticed as, as it is shown in the example of Kerala, where there is a universalization of health care services. But in the 21st century, there is a massive commercialization of health services that demand user fee. Are women able to access private health care that charge exorbitant fees? Can they get inpatient services and can they get timely services? I think there are n number of horror stories we have heard and they have been reported by the in the social media as well as the mainstream media of the kind of problems that women face even during two, two years of pandemic uh, and, uh, and the lockdown. So I think it is very important and I uh, congratulate Dr. Lakshmi for and her guide, Dr. Professor Manisha Karni for choosing such an important issue for the serious examination 
and I request Dr. Lakshmi to Lakshmi Priya to make her presentation. Over to Dr. Lakshmi Priya. Uh, thank you, Naina, for the introduction, and thank you, ma'am, for setting the background for the presentation. Uh, so, I'll share. I'll share the screen. Yeah. So, uh, this is the topic of my presentation today: a socioeconomic analysis of health-seeking behavior of women in an urban area with special reference to their employment status. And uh, this presentation I've taken, uh, it's a part of my thesis, which was submitted to uh, University of Mumbai under the guidance of uh, Professor Manisha, ma'am. So as an introduction, uh, what I have looked at is that uh, this, uh, the labor force participation of women in India is very low. And according to the, according to various, Yes, According to various mm -hmm. surveys, um, it was like PLFS survey and uh, some surveys, it was found that the, the, the participation of women in uh, labor force participation in, of women in urban areas is very low. And even ILO has, uh, ILO 2021 has also found that it is very low. That is, it is around 19.6, uh, 22.2 percent. And this is very low compared to many other countries. And also another problem um, we are facing is that India is having high out-of-pocket expenditure uh, compared to many even uh, South Asian countries. That is, India's um, out-of-pocket expenditure is around 62.6. Uh, that is, it comes around 63%. Um, other countries like Pakistan, Nepal, they are having around 56, 50, 51%. And China, it's uh, very low. That is 36%. So, and our public expenditure is on uh, health is also low uh, as a percent of, percentage of GDP, it is 1.3, but uh, uh, according to the 2021 economic survey, so that is also low compared to many other countries. Then uh, actually there are many health insurance schemes, health schemes of various types, reimbursements are also there, but this is only for central and state governments uh, employees and uh, there are private health insurance also. Uh, another uh, another point is that the disease pattern in developing countries is changing and the proportion of uh, NCDs, that is non-communicable diseases, are increasing among women as well as men. And uh, there are few studies which have exclusively found health expenditure of women at the micro level. So the NCDs, uh, I did not find much studies which um, say about the NCDs of women. Uh, so there are many studies on the maternal uh, health of women. But it is also, we, we should also recognize that these uh, NCDs like diabetes, thyroid, they also uh, can give rise to reproductive and reproductive health problems later in their life. So the, this um, studies on health financing and health expenditure was very low in the literature survey. So the area under study was Mumbai and its suburbs. Mumbai and Navi Mumbai were taken. The wards in Mumbai and the Pacific The wards in Mumbai and uh, the specific locations in Mumbai were selected by purposive sampling so that all the regions in Mumbai and all the nodes uh, in the NMMC region, that is uh, Municipal Corporation of Navi, Navi Mumbai are covered in the study. So uh, a closed gender questionnaire was used for the survey and the age group of women uh, were 18 to 59. So this uh, questionnaire was tested and the survey was conducted for uh, 531 women and the focus group discussions were also done. With the, there were three groups of 12 women each. So the sample selection, Mumbai region was selected purposefully as it represents the most diverse population in India. A representative sample of women from all income groups, occupation status, religion, caste, uh, nature of employment, that is employed women, unemployed women, uh, all of them were selected for the sample. And uh, Mum the Mumbai city was divided into different areas according to the Human Development Report of 2009. The sample profile was the age group of uh, the mean age was uh, around uh, 37, 36.9, that is 37 percent. Education of women in the sample, uh, it was around secondary, the mean uh, education. Family size was four. Monthly income was around uh, 8,246. Monthly family income was 40,870. Hospitals bills, the average was 19,600. 
and the insurance payment was around 10,000. So the occupation status here also, I found that there were very less women who are uh, employed, 38% um, uh, uh, employed, only 38% were employed and around 56% uh, were unemployed. That is more than half the sample was uh, unemployed. So uh, here I was taking the health seeking behavior of women. So I have taken how they are going for health checkup, are they taking care of their health, uh, which hospitals, which type of hospitals they are going and what is the health financing and what is the source of health financing for women. That, that is a, these are the main things which I've taken in the study. So health checkup is positively related to, uh, I did a, uh, when the, in the questionnaire, there were questions, they are going for health checkup regularly. So the logistic regression was done to find out the factors which uh, lead to the health checkup of women. And it was found that it is positive, health checkup is positively related to uh, health, in, if they have health insurance and if they are employed, then they go for uh, health checkup. And why they are not going for the health checkup, that is, uh, they uh, said that they don't have any uh, health problem. And for women who had chronic illnesses, like uh, mostly they had NCDs like diabetes, then uh, joint pains and uh, all those, so thyroid problems. So this uh, blood pressure problems and all they were there. So these uh, women who had chronic illness, they said that their main reason for not going was affordability problems, that they couldn't afford the going for uh, health checkup uh, very often. A hospital admission and uh, how they are sourcing the finance for their health care. It was found that around 66.5% were admitted for chronic illness. Uh, so chronic illnesses, they require treatment for a long period, even uh, require treatment for a long period. And 38% of unemployed and 27 employed women suffered from chronic diseases. Around 44% were admitted in private hospitals. Irrespective of the type of illness, proportion of cost, uh, proportion of cost of medicine in total cost was found to be very high. That is. Uh, other costs were like travel cost, uh, then uh, the uh, room rent. So these were the other other items which were given, and it was found that uh, cost of medicines were very high. So cost of medicine was highest for women who had acute illness, and fees to doctors were high for those who had chronic illnesses. So what is the awareness of the women about health insurance, and what is the uh, and how many have health insurance? So this uh, green uh, color shows uh, they don't have, they are not aware about, uh, they don't have uh, any, they don't have uh, awareness about health insurance and blue shows they have awareness. So it was found that around 44.5% women are aware about health insurance, but uh, it was found that those who have health insurance is very less, only 16.1 had health insurance. So this shows the um, sources of payment so the main source of payment can be seen that it is husband savings that they are using for uh, their hospitalization payments. So other other type of uh, sources were like their own savings, their parents' uh, money, in-laws, other relatives borrowed money. So they were all less and it is the husband savings that is the most uh, highest. And from um, even from secondary sources like NSSO 71st round and 75th round, it was found that uh, the people are using uh, their, uh, the women are using the household savings or household income for their hospital payments. So the demand of health insurance, which are the factors which lead to the demand for health insurance. So awareness, that is also um, logistic regression was done uh, with the data and it was found that awareness awareness about health insurance uh, can increase the demand. Awareness about health insurance and also when they are in the younger ages, then also they can see the, the then also they can um, demand the health insurance. So, so younger women demand health insurance than older women. So even uh, those who have health insurance is around 16% also, only about 16% of women knew about the central government health schemes and central government insurance policies. <clears throat> To know more about the health financing of women, so the uh, women were divided in different categories like employed and insured, uh, employed and not insured, unemployed and insured, unemployed and uninsured. So it was found that irrespective of the occupation status and irrespective of the insurance, if they have insurance or not, they are using husband savings for the 
um, source of payment, and this is used by highest by uh, unemployed and uninsured women. So health score was calculated to understand the health status of the women uh, in the sample and, it, and uh, a principal component analysis was done and insert score was also done. The variables which we were used to compute the health score were age of the age of the women, age at marriage, age at which the first child was born, family, monthly income and years of education. So uh, the health PCA was run and um, health score is taken as the proxy for health status of women. Higher health score means they have better health status and uh, higher health score means they have better health status. High uh, health score is uh, health score is higher for employed and uh, for the and the uh, the vice versa is for the unemployed group of women in the group in the sample. So health status by analyzing the data, it was found that if women are employed, the health status improves. And if they have health insurance, then the health status then also improves. So if they are employed and if they have health insurance, that means the health status is improving. So um, mean of the mean of the health, health score was found, and it was found that it was around 0.64, uh, and then maximum score was 6.9, minimum was 0 0.08, and the range of the health score was around 6.8. So um, the to understand more about the health score. The health, the average of the health score was calculated with respect to the socioeconomic factors like age of the respondent at the birth of the first child, monthly income, age of the women, education of women, etc. And it was found that the average of the health score, that is the mean health score, is increasing as um, as income increases and education. As age increases, as age of the women increases, the average health score health score decreases. For age of the respondent during the birth of the first child, the health score is less when they are um, less than 18 years. And uh, when they are in the higher age group, that is around, that is 30 plus, then it is uh, decreasing. And when they are in the nine, uh, when uh, that is uh, the less for 18 years and higher towards, uh, and uh, when they are in the higher age group also, it is less. The higher health mean of the health score is decreasing. So it was uh, as a summary. It can be said that uh, as uh, the fourth focus group discussion, the results of the focus group discussion tells that most of the women who took part in the discussion went to public hospitals for treatment, but they were unsatisfied with the behavior of the health personnel. Women thought that there should be better facilities for regular proper, proper checkups, uh, less crowding in the hospitals, and better equipment in the hospitals. Change in attitude of the hospital staff as the treatment given to patients is not liked by majority of the respondents, and uh, better facilities at the public hospital at a lower rates was uh, another demand given by many of the women. Some women responded that facilities at private hospitals are better, but the rates are very high. There should be more facilities available in the private hospitals, but at a lower rate. And uh, more than half of them did not have health insurance. Uh, even those who had health insurance, they did not want to avail the benefit, uh, benefit of it because they thought that there, is, there are delays, procedural delays, and then uh, they did not understand uh, how to do the paperwork. And uh, even they, when they went to hospitals also, doctors, and uh, they, they also did not give them uh, any um, awareness, any knowledge regarding the what when they have to use or how much money they will get. So women thought that it was a waste of money to take health insurance and they did not have proper information how insurance allows risk, risk pooling and gives them the support during sickness. They asked me like, why, why should we waste money? Uh, it will be a waste of money uh, if we are not falling ill. That is what they said, told me. So many are aware about and their incomes are also very less to pay for the insurance premium. Many were unaware about uh, where they can get the health insurance. And women in the discussion were not satisfied with the job which they had, as most of them were working as uh, domestic workers and did not get enough leaves. Because of this reason, they have postponed the treatment of many health issues. Even some operations also they have postponed because they uh, they thought that if they uh, take leaves, they will be replaced by someone else and they will lose their jobs. Uh, there was a, there was some uh, question to understand the mental health of women, and this was mainly on the tension and stress. So discussion about tension and stress uh, was not considered as important as it was daily affair in their lives. They asked me why you are asking about tension and stress because um, we have fight for, we have fights in our house and we are tensed about the salaries and our jobs. So this is always that is happening in our lives. 
So majority of the women express the following issues, lack of doctors in hospitals, long waiting time, non-availability of emergency care. They thought that uh, same type of medicines are given for all illness and diagnostic tests are not uh, done on time. Uh, also, they said that they even the uh, usual checkups like the uh, the uh, checking of BP and all those who not were done by the hospital by the doctors. The nurses and doctors are hostile. Staff does not treat patients well. Women express following demands: proper facilities of medical checkup, reduce the crowding in the hospitals, better uh, technology and medical equipment, improved facilities, low, low cost, and empathetic attitude of the health personnel. So according to the health status, the health status analyze indicated that health status of women increases when they are employed and had health insurance. Health checkup also, very high percentage of women did not go for health checkup. Around 76% did not do in health checkups. So um, analysis of primary data, as said earlier, those who are employed and have health insurance, they do health, uh, health checkups. Around 62% of women wished, uh, who did, uh, did health checkup revealed that the reason for doing health checkup was that they wish they want to take care of their health and they consciously take the efforts. Health financing during, um, uh, during hospitalization, 54% of the women in the samples, they had to rely on this saving of health, health seeking, uh, which is a uh, serious concern. And also the primary survey showed that proportion of women who use husband savings, they were the highest. Health insurance, 45% had awareness, but only 16% uh, demanded uh, had the health insurance. So better knowledge uh, and awareness uh, and women, when they are in the younger ages, they, uh, they, they demand the health insurance. Women in the FGD reported that they did not want to waste their money as their salaries are less and they do not want to take health insurance. Lack of proper knowledge about health insurance is a major obstacle among lower income groups. As... Uh, uh, said as observed in the study. Some policy recommendations, employment seems to have positive impact on health status of women, uh, hence improving wage and self-employment opportunities and making market more fair and accessible for women has to be given priority. So it, the study has an urban focus and women in urban India are facing issues related to lifestyle diseases, which are reported in other uh, NFHs and other secondary data. Hence, the health checkup should be made mandatory under several health schemes for women because if they are not done, they can worsen the situation, the condition of the women, and lead to many other problems. Effective implementation of schemes like Ayushman Bharat will help in extending coverage of basic health facility to a large number of people in short span of time. Strengthening of existing public health care and more involvement of private sector and public-private partnership mode or empaneling the private uh, more private hospitals to give health care services to poor and lower income and even middle income groups um, is the recommendation of the study. Better dissemination of information about health schemes. Many families uh, go into poverty due to high out-of-pocket expenditure as they do not have proper knowledge of health insurance and schemes and also reducing the requirement of some documentation from the poor, they, that can also help because they said that it requires a lot of procedural uh, and paperwork is also required. Improving quality of serv health service and better services of health personnel and infrastructure of hospitals is also, is a very uh, needed uh, uh, demand from many of the women. As during hospitalization, mostly the source of payment of hospital bills are savings of the household. So, Better financing options in the form of insurance schemes with cashless options should be encouraged in the lower income groups. Effective universal health care and national health protection scheme can be very useful to have their impact on the health of most of the urban poor in the country. Way forward, uh, there can be a comparative analysis and how the Ayushman Bharat is implemented and, uh, and other some state uh, uh, insurance schemes can be there, how they are implemented and are the people are aware about this or what, how much is their knowledge that can be another type of study. And this can provide very useful insights for health policy for the urban poor, uh, urban poor including women and people from women and other women, men from marginalized groups. Research done by comparing health seeking behavior in rural urban areas, uh, Mumbai and the other um, rural areas in Maharashtra can be useful. Uh, rural, rural urban differences, what are the differences and what are the similarities can also come out from such type of studies. Also comparing uh, health-seeking behavior of women in metropolitan cities like Mumbai and to other uh, other urban, other cities or other emerging cities can be useful. 
and this can uh, they from the uh, here the government and policy makers can understand what uh, what the people want also there can be some um, household studies like then, then the gender differences can also come out so this can be these can be some important areas of future research these are the references some of the main references which i have done Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Vibhuti, ma'am, for uh, the uh, giving me the opportunity to talk. And also, I thank IMPRI for giving me the opportunity to talk. I... Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi Priya. You have come up thank with you. a very, yeah, you have covered such a vast topic in a very short and very sharp manner. Your presentation was backed by uh, evidences. And I think the way you did the research and also the your recommendations follow from your research. I think they are very important and many important studies have uh, done with the, in India, even the Sati study uh, also the findings are more or less the same that what we need is a cashless uh, transaction. And yeah. second one is a universal uh, health services, universalization. In fact, they have organized several international uh, webinars also. My first question is to Dr. Suchita Krishna Prasad, that uh, recently ILO has come up with a report on uh, health seeking behavior of workers in informal sector. How, do you see any parallels between Dr. Lakshmi's presentation and the ILO report? And as an economist, how would you link this gender question, very mind boggling gender issue of women's very, very high mortality and morbidity rate in India with the macroeconomic policies pursued in the 21st century India. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, having me here, uh, Professor Vibhuti ma'am. And it has been a, a very enlightening discuss, uh, uh, you know, uh, paper that Dr. Lakshmi Priya has uh, presented so far. And thank you for asking me to also relate the I recent ILO study which is about extending the social health protection to informal sector workers in India. And this wor work, as uh, uh, some all of us know, has uh, almost runs parallel. You know, it is, uh, it has been covered, it has covered four states. Now, Dr. Lakshmi Priya ended her presentation by saying that maybe if we go for rural or maybe go for other metros, we might see a different picture. But interestingly, this particular uh, study that has been done by ILO along with the Institute of Human Development, it covers four states, uh, West Bengal, Kerala, Haryana, and Rajasthan. And it covers a large number of, number of districts there, uh, hundreds of workers and hundreds of enterprises there. The, it is basically about ESIC. Okay, It is basically about state sponsored insurance scheme, which is for workers. So uh, while we look at the vision of making insurance available to all, even the self-employed or own account workers and so on, that seems to be a distant dream when you see the report and the observations of this report. You know, So what Lakshmi Priya ma'am uh, just now pointed out, uh, you know, even in case of uh, accidents at workplace, even in case of accidents at workplace, there is a large uh, out-of-pocket expenditure that happens um, in, in uh, industries. And so this particular report says that, you know, if there are naturally more accidents in fabrication uh, units or manufacturing units and less in, let's say, agriculture or other industries, but about only 13% who suffer accident at workplace uh, get it from the insurance or get it from, uh, they don't pay out of their pockets. That means either the employer or some kind of state scheme uh, takes care of that. So if this is a case of even accidents, now here, of course, we are not taking the gender issue uh, right now. It's a, at a universal level, but it is easy to imagine that the situation would be even diffi more difficult for women, okay. particularly when you look at uh, the falling labor uh, force participation rate. So those who are employed may or may not have access to the ESIC, uh, depending on whether the employer agrees to register and so on and so forth. So you can look at the extent of marginalization. 
you can look at the extent of marginalization, the number of people who are in the informal sector, everybody knows it's around 90%. In that, employers who are willing to register, in that, employers who may not even know, and in that, uh, workers who are willing to register. And then in that, women workers who are willing to register. So you can, you know, just go. And then, of course, there are women largely who are self-employed. You pay, uh, you know, our own account workers or whatever, all right? So starting from domestic workers. So at one point, we have the vision of making, yes, I say available to all, making insurance available to all. Of course, uh, Dr. Lakshmi Priya has not spoken about ESIC speci specifically. Yeah. And since uh, you have given me the opportunity of relating this to ILO report, I'm taking the ESIC. So let's not go. So if you're look, looking at health sector to become more uh, public sector oriented and public oriented, then a public oriented insurance scheme would be something like an ESIC. Correct. So if health sector is, has to go more public and more open and cover more poor people or, or you know make it more affordable then we need to also run parallelly the expansion of the esic and if that is not happening and people are aware but they are not going either because i mean of course the hospital condition of esic is also uh, under question Okay, uh, either the medicines are not available or the doctors don't go there and, you know, the rest of it is almost known to uh, everyone. But uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's surprising that the same findings, uh, similar findings are arising. Of course, there is lesser uh, stress on women workers there. But what Lakshmi Priya has brought out that women have to rely on husband savings. This is coming out even in the ILO report. Okay, He's, they say that in the last five years, less than 14% of women, uh, female employers, uh, workers, or their spouses of male workers have undergone pregnancy episodes and assistance was received only in 54 cases. So that means women are going to ASIC only during pregnancy. Out of that, only half of them are going and, uh, uh, to the ESIC, around two fifth beneficiaries were, have accessed the Janani, Janani Suraksha Yojana. You know, so this is something that uh, Lakshmi Priya, Madam, had uh, referred to towards the end. You know, what are the other schemes that are available, and whether that information is available, and you know whether there are uh, procedural uh, blocks that might arise in accessing uh, that assistance, and so on. Okay, so uh, so there is a health risk to uh, uh, workers in in informal sector, occupational health hazard. I think this is another thing. Uh, yeah. So so out of these people, these workers that uh, the women that we have taken, those who are not employed, maybe under the uh, pressure of not being employed and therefore being dependent. So that causes another kind of mental stress and mental stress is a mother of all kinds of lifestyle diseases, starting from hypertension to blood, you know, uh, to diabetes and so on. Okay. And those who are working have to, again, balance home and uh, workplace and that might give rise to other stress. But I'm happy to see the results that if there is more employment, there is some degree of empowerment that women do buy insurance and women are looking after their health and therefore it becomes a very strong case for uh, allowing women to take up you know come out of the care economy and uh, you know play a significant role in the market economy now um, i just wanted to highlight a few paradoxes also here with your permission ma'am yeah uh, please go ahead. yeah so see if you look at the entire health sector, okay, India is at the top as far as pharmaceutical industry goes. Okay, we are called as global pharmaceutical hub, right? So we are also in, you know, earning a large amount of foreign exchange through uh, pharmaceutical industry. Our vaccines are great, and we are, you know, we are having a glorious path as far as pharmaceutical industry is concerned. But our, um, uh, you know, ratio of uh, medical professionals to population is really dismal. 
So this is a kind of paradox. So when it comes to goods, we seem to be doing very well in the competitive world. Okay, uh, being able to export a large number of something like 20% of generic medicines we are able to manufacture and export. And when it comes to personnel, medical personnel, we are not producing enough. And probably as a result, even if women start seeking help, there might be a, a block on the demand, um, on the supply side. There might be a block on supply side. So that, that will be, of course, uh, beyond the uh, beyond the subject matter or the, the research uh, question that uh, Prof. Dr. Lakshmi Priya has taken, but the studies are showing that a large number, something like twenty percent of uh, registered medical practitioners, are out of job. They are not working. So this is another interesting thing. If again, you know, this might be another study. If there are women doctors who are not taking up jobs is is there any other pressure why they you know decide to do something else but uh, not go here so there are studies which you know uh, an article from scroll which says that you know uh, everybody who passes mbbs is registered with yeah. IMA, right and therefore can be considered as a doctor and therefore if you see doctor to population it might show a different picture but how many of them are actually practicing Okay, so, so that may also be uh, another issue. Uh, and of course, we need to tackle this whole thing from, first of all, creating more people, more women who want to be healthy, who, want, who can provide for themselves to be healthy and not depend on their spouses all the time. And, uh, and then, of course, create. So uh, even about this, you know, this uh, medical professional to population, there's a big debate about, you know, whether there's a one doctor to thousand or less than one doctor to thousand and so on. So recently there's a, uh, there's a, there's an argument which says that if you take Ayush, the entire Ayush, okay, which includes Yunani and Ayurvedic and homeopathy and everything, then this uh, ratio turns out to be something like one is to 835 or something. I don't know whether that is enough, good enough for us to start patting our backs. But uh, once again, globally, that is still not recognized. Yeah. So, uh, so these are paradoxes. On the one hand, we are number one in pharmaceutical production. Our uh, surgeons are uh, globally well known. Okay, uh, in every area, in transplantation, in all kinds of uh, uh, surgeries, our super specialty specialty surgeons and at the same time something else appears to be true and uh, which needs a lot of work which needs a lot of work so i congratulate uh, uh, my friend uh, professor manisha karane for guiding uh, dr lakshmi priya to come out with this and it gives very interesting link more jobs more insurance greater health seeking and probably you know uh, you know, a demography cycle is 15 years. So only when these women and in the take healthy history. for a long, longer period of time and probably inform their daughters that it is your responsibility to stay healthy and don't depend on your husband's savings. That's when slowly the changes will start happening. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to express my views. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sita, for, for making such an important, like showing the interconnections. And I like one important thing, which you say that occupational health hazard. And we have seen that in informal sector, anytime they have any kind of accident, immediately employers throw them out. It's not that they they don't even provide sometimes even first aid. Okay, they are the they are just useless. No, so that is the kind of attitude that the labor market is so harsh with the informal sector workers. And ninety two percent women are in the informal sector workers. So I think the state intervention becomes extremely important. Uh, in fact, there is a question in the chat box that did these women in the study. Uh, uh, approach the Ayushman Bharat. Did they avail Ayushman Bharat? But I think there are several recent studies also which show that how the paperwork is so uh, demanding and plus uh, so, so much of time it takes, no, even to recover. So I think that I think Lakshmi can answer later on. But before that, I would like to ask Professor Anne Mani McLeish. She has also done several micro studies in the 
in, uh, in Trichy area, and uh, she is also expert on the informal sector workers. So from the women's studies perspective and from the uh, practitioner in the women's movement, uh, how do you see these uh, findings of Lakshmi Priya? What are the learnings of these findings and what kind of uh, strategies we can, uh, action agenda that we can evolve to make the state and the non-state actors accountable for women's health seeking uh, needs? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uputi. And I congratulate uh, Lakshmi Privya for uh, bringing this out, uh, the, the, the micro-level study, which is very much telling in terms of uh, what uh, Sisita was also pointing that going parallel to the ILO study. And uh, the very revealing uh, findings say that the insurance is there, but people are not aware of the schemes available. And also there is a, uh, there are associations with the age, the income, and uh, the, the um, education, etc. This is very common on the one hand, but at the same time, uh, in the particular uh, uh, sample you had taken, uh, the, the, the urban um, settlement, wherein uh, you've drawn the sample is very, um, very important in terms of uh, now the question in the when the discussion on intersectionality, et cetera, are going on and uh, the concerns of the marginalized. And um, I, in my own research, I have observed that uh, being an economic student, I, uh, since I work on gender also, there are more um, social determinants or the social health. determinants of the uh, uh, consider more uh, or determining the health seeking behavior of the, uh, the, the women than uh, the, the economics as such. And it is uh, uh, revealed here also. Uh, one thing I have seen that there is, a, when we talk in the context of the sustainable development goals, there is an interconnection on the one, uh, the different, in, I mean, gender cuts across all the variable, all the themes. And here, as far as the goal three is concerned, which is dealing with L, you, it is connected with the six also. Uh, the, the sanitation and the yeah. health, uh, sorry, drink, water. Yeah. Where I have been working uh, in, a state, in a statewide project with the support of the RUSA, uh, where I see in the perspective of health, the sanitation and uh, uh, water, uh, clean water, etc., they are very much connected to your health. And you are talking about occupational health, and uh, you could see some of the hazardous occupation which the women are involved, particularly the tanning industries, where they have to completely work with chemical totally. And uh, I'm afraid whether after 40 or so they'll be surviving. So that is a kind of I an mean, impact. And uh, on the one hand, the informal sector; on the other hand, some of the hazardous employment in which they are engaged. And that too, as informal sector, daily wage or temporary workers, and the health in, the health implications on the women are enormous. And when I was talking about the social determinants, I I very much uh, re, uh, bring some of the uh, the observations I made uh, in this Rusa project on uh, uh, the the uh, the project goes as uh, uh, health seeking behavior of the. Uh, purchasing behavior in the rural or urban peri-urban area, or urban and peri-urban area, special reference to gender, environment, and uh, um, uh, marginalized. So it is uh, the statewide uh, uh, observation revealed that uh, in some of the districts, uh, we we claim that uh, the progressive state, the Tamil Nadu is progressive state, and it has this model, Rivadian model, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, you could see in three districts out of the eight districts uh, we have chosen, uh, still have separate uh, uh, space provided by the very uh, panjayat itself to make the penetrating girls and women stay. That is already happening in the private space where the women uh, and girls will be exploded, still continuing, though changes are taking place. But uh, in some uh, Karu, Nilgiris, and uh, uh, Perambalo, these are the three districts in which I could observe that uh, earlier it was like there would be a space where I'm talking about uh, Parambalo and uh, they'll be saying now in Karur, it is the panchayat itself constructed and given and the menstruating girls are supposed to be staying there. You And there are some tribal communities where you have to stay in um, amidst the woods where some uh, people will be staying uh, to support. Otherwise, it is the girl alone will be sleeping there because that is the kind of a, uh, the, the um, stigma they associate with uh, menstrual hygiene. And you know the story that during the Aja cyclone, we have lost our girl uh, because of uh, she being kept outside and 
during that cyclone she lost her life so in spite of this this um, perception that menstrual hygiene is dirty and it is untouchable is not going and that that is one area we need to uh, uh, we have been sub, I mean, representing this to state and that state has come out with several initiatives but still uh, these three districts and the kind of things are not going so similarly health seeking behavior the question of uh, the moment uh, the uh, woman uh, fall ill what happens she will be thinking of uh, nine items i'm saying a uh, dozen items i should say so uh, whether uh, what is the distance where, uh, where when i go there who will accompany what is the transport and who will be there whether a male doctor or a female doctor who will take up uh, the uh, household duties the children the animal husbandry whatever all these things will be coming to her mind and ultimately she will give up so this is what the kind of social reproductive activities on which the women are supposed i mean uh, expected to engage in whether she is ill or she, whenever there is any illness she will take seek for uh, some home remedies that will take care but if, if they will allow it to turn into a chronic that is what in the study also it is uh, it is more percentage of chronic uh, uh, sufferers only sought, uh, sought for the treatment so uh, in our own study it was uh, particularly with uh, breast cancer studies it was revealed that the women report only at the advanced stages almost the doctors are not able to support in spite of the fact that there has been awareness but uh, it is something on their private parts and um, the whatever the awareness given uh, do not reach them that is one question and the uh, breast examination etc so uh, after uh, uh, suffering for a long and if they are not able to bear the pain only they report to the doctor so this is also one of the factors and why when it is in the private part whether it is something to do with your uh, sexual reproduct i mean transmission uh, diseases or something urinary infection or your breast cancer they the seeking behavior is very minimum and uh, they wait for till it turns time and interestingly in this study also it was revealed that most of the savings of men have been used so it was surprising and sometimes i felt that it is quite contradicting also when uh, it was said that uh, the employed but not insured uh, but the bills 0.7 bills were met from my insurance so they haven't uh, insured but still uh, there is 0.7 uh, and it has to be uh, explained and similarly it is 2% of my insurance for unemployed women the earlier one was for employed women this is for the unemployed women they say that they haven't insured um, but still Uh, and that means the husband's insurance also, and uh, but still some percentage are there who use the insurance. Uh, that too, my insurance. So that needs to be checked. And so uh, it it in only implies that the dependence, as it was pointed out by Sujit, also that so much more than sixty percent. I think they were using the husband's uh, uh, spousal in insurance or income only. and that uh, i don't know very specific to this particular sample uh, and might be uh, applied to the macro context also because of the the you have been experiencing the declining uh, economic participation of women and uh, hardly uh, one fifth of the women are found in the labor market in the paid employment though women are engaged in un unpaid care work uh, largely Uh, though they are in the market also they come back and engage in uh, this so this uh, i try to connect that um, economic uh, empowerment and also education and uh, other insurance awareness on insurance have uh, positive have been a positively associated with the self esteem behavior and we need to promote that and uh, you know to represent our strategies to the state also that uh, more and more awareness intensive awareness is to be given like there are uh, tv um, advertisements are coming uh, and uh, that is creating some kind of awareness but not really uh, reaching the needy particularly the marginalized and so that could be one of the strategies as to use the media uh, social media and also the film cinema theaters etc to present to their slides wherein the the people should be in vernacular language to communicate uh, uh, quickly to uh, uh, catch it up because sometimes uh, some advertisement may not uh, really catch in right and the second one important strategy is that the uh, the, the um, whatever the focus uh, here in tamil nadu we have this Uh, door to door illam thedi marthuvam that is uh, like you are offering your medical services at the doorsteps 
so that uh, kind of as lakshmi priya was also pointing to that the compare the other states what is happening so thanks to the post covid uh, initiatives of uh, tamil nadu government where um, it is uh, regularly going and particularly checking the diabetics and hypertension fever uh, the blood pressure levels and uh, the moment it is uh, and also offer tablets there itself and the moment it is chronic or turning to be they refer to the hospital so this is one of the important initiatives which could be uh, uh, even adopted by other states and uh, there is also other kinds of like the preventive aspect also like uh, where the school children are being given slippers and uh, other such initiatives tablets other lesson girls of course it is there in the national health mission also but one other important i try to connect to the education is that again uh, the 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 door step education is going and uh, being offered the supplementary education in the evenings and the uh, the graduates are uh, or any other who are volunteering to serve for rupees 1000 per month uh, have been identified and it is called illam thedi kalvi like door offering uh, education at the door step so particularly to take care of uh, or compensate for the class loss you experience there in the uh, context of uh, covid and the, the, this is very much flourishing and we recently had 100 and all the elamtedi kalvi volunteers coming and interacting with us and uh, they were even uh, i mean mo- doing more than what the teacher class teacher in the for the whole day uh, is doing and uh, sometimes it will be a threat for the school teachers also so that is what really creative innovative the point i am trying to connect with the health seeking behavior is that if this kind of uh, uh, supplementary education system or any other which try to take away some of the responsibilities from the women the particular the social reproductive uh, responsibilities then the women will get find uh, time and space to uh, definitely uh, uh, go to uh, report to, uh, to the doctors that is one point and of course their own income earning uh, capacity that will reduce the dependence because the moment they think of the money is also one factor to uh, go and approach the doctor so and also dep- uh, asking and approaching their own spouses to uh, pay for that and sometimes they may have income because we are concerned with the marginalized communities and you have other un- unconspicuous consumption taking place and therefore that also will be an important so promoting women offering skill training and also uh, make them uh, engaged in some work or yes that could bring some income and thanks to government of uh, tamil nadu again it is the proposed stage but it will uh, implement this 1000 for the uh, uh, homemakers will also be given every month and they it's only expected that they will spend that money for the, their own uh, uh, medicine and the other 1000 rupees for all the government school uh, girls from 6 to 12 uh, who completed in the government schools if they interested in join higher education they will be given 1000 rupees per month uh, as stipend and this will also have implication because it is going to increase the education level and as it is established in this uh study that uh, health is uh, health seeking behavior is positive to social education and that for that plot so help so that is what we need to see the how as we have been doing in the sdgs this gender is a cross cutting variable so also here the health seeking behavior is also is uh, uh, is connected with various other sdgs and if you want to really make 2030 to at least reach to certain extent though not it is possible to achieve the whole targets it is possible to reach to a certain extent based on the findings of this study itself we can say that uh, there has to be a need to increase the awareness and also need to uh, connect, connect the women employment to in, uh, improve or increase because that is connected positively and also the existing schemes be strengthened to uh, reach a store step because health seeking behavior has a connection you have to travel somewhere go somewhere means that it won't but if it is offered the very two steps then it will be uh, the question of the health seeking the absence of health seeking may be 100% or 90% will be reduced to leave alone the women who are out of homes so uh, these are the points the uh, strategy uh, i would like to make here and uh, we'll be back if there is any questions also thank you very much sir yeah professor
Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mani Maitlai, for bringing out a very important concern about the social determinants of health seeking behavior and also linking it up with the SDG 3 and SDG 6, uh, which is also sanitation is very much linked to health. And I think one more aspect is also mental health, because this is the first time in the union budget that more than 700 crores are allocated for mental health. And two years of pandemic has created a major uh, this thing. And about mental health, nobody even talks because of the social stigma yeah. that you have yeah. the question of hazardous employment and in the hazardous employment what are the social protection schemes that we need to have as per the ILO guideline uh, so far as the uh, accident compensation and things are concerned what you said about the services at the doorstep I think that was the health for all by 2008 was saying that from let us shift our focus from hospital center services to the community center services because transport yeah. cost itself is so prohibitive even when we have, we, we, even here, like when we talk about the uh, healthcare facilities, they said that uh, for us, uh, why should we spend in a city like Mumbai, you no, know, 40, 50 rupees instead we can buy food. So we yes. don't want, we, before COVID kills us, we will be killed by our hunger. So that is the yeah. level of marginalization that you are facing. So I think these are very important concerns. And now I come to Dr. Samani Shakarni. Oh, that, point here, the yeah, free bus yeah. also is available. So I think they are complementing each other. Free bus okay. scheme scheme and also the yeah so i was coming to that only because dr karna's okay. specialization is infrastructure social and physical infrastructure so along with the health seeking uh, 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 health services what other services that we need and at an, as an economist what should we recommend that you can't see health or education or transport in silos no you need to see the interconnections and when you want to make your scheme or when you want to make your policy intervention effective then you also need to have a, a physical and social infrastructure uh, for that also in a very it should be in place and you have to create structures and mechanisms to uh, see to it that uh, whether it is Ayushman Bharat or any other health services that are accessible to so how do we increase the access uh, and what is your understanding and how would you respond to Lakshmi's finally, the final policy recommendations? Uh, yeah, ma'am, thank you for inviting me and uh, uh, thank you for giving Lakshmi also this opportunity to present her work. Uh, I also thank my fellow uh, discussant uh, who have made uh, important uh, observations here. Uh, and uh, thank you, Suchitra Man, for uh, giving your insights from the ILO report. Uh, and some of the findings are very important and relevant in Indian context uh, too. And uh, thank you, Mani Maitlai, Madam, for uh, sharing your insights from uh, the micro studies. And those are also quite interesting and I would like to look at uh, those studies uh, surely. Uh, so uh, before answering your question, ma'am, because uh, unfortunately, uh, when we frame the policies, we do not adopt such holistic approach that you have to think about access. And when I talk about access, uh, it, it could be uh, in merit goods like health and education. You don't have to think about economic access. You also have to think about social access and geographical access. And the question of geographical access becomes very important in case of health, okay? So for uh, um, setting up the primary health center or community health center, the population and population norm is there and also the clinic has to be within some kilometers of your vicinity or uh, where you where the where the people are residing but uh, those norms are generally uh, violated and uh, uh, an answer to that is in some schemes you also have transport allowance which is given to the uh, uh, the patient or the health seeker or uh, the women for example in jsy uh, it is the provision is made that you have uh, uh, you can have either an ambulance or if ambulance is not available the transport cost is reimbursed okay but i find it very rare so uh, i don't know beyond this whether there are any uh, such examples where uh, the, uh, the holistic approach where physical infrastructure uh, of course you can see that in wash uh, to certain extent where you are thinking about uh, uh, better hygiene, sanitation, drinking water, uh, 
um, and also housing facilities through IAY and all, where uh, you you know that uh, these facilities are also important for uh, achieving better health outcomes. So uh, I don't know whether I have a uh, I have a proper answer for your question, okay? but. Um, uh, I have other concerns uh, to express over here. For example, uh, we, as uh, Suchita ma'am also said, we, we are doing very well in certain things. Like if you look at the total health expenditure of India as a percentage of GDP, we can be compared with some of the developed countries in the world. But unfortunately, when you look at the public health expenditure, it is just 0.9 to 1%, leaving the COVID period during which it had gone little more higher. Otherwise, it has been very, very dismal as far as the public expenditure on health is concerned. So uh, because of this, ours has become a private health economy where 80% of uh, health expenditure is private health expenditure. And out of it, most of it is uh, out-of-pocket expenditure. So that, uh, that leads to a lot of burden. There is a burden of this expenditure on uh, the people. Okay, so this becomes a burden on those uh, who are in the low. Uh, very poor. So that is a major concern that we have. And with this, uh, another uh, dimension is uh, the political economy of it. So are we are we thinking about a withdrawal of state from? health and education, which is very, very worrisome, according to me, because uh, health seeking is, uh, in that sense, is very, very uh, poor for the poorest of the poor, for the marginal sections of the population. So they'll be deprived uh, from health, uh, accessing health. And what uh, it will lead to mainly withdrawal from the health seeking uh, uh, behavior or withdrawal from the uh, health care. So which is not a good uh, uh, good sign at all. So this is my first concern. And when we talk about uh, the supply side, then uh, I feel that the healthcare facilities are provided in three domains, basically. One is the low cost intervention, low cost healthcare intervention. Uh, one is the public uh, health, which is provided by the public uh, through the government and so on. And the third uh, domain is uh, the catastrophic private, uh, catastrophic health expenditure, which is mostly in the private uh, domain, okay? So low cost intervention, there is no problem because uh, poor also is able to afford either they go to public hospitals or private hospitals, okay? And when you have uh, different kinds of uh, doctors in the uh, urban areas, in slums and all, they also practice sliding uh, sliding, uh, what you say, sliding pricing or price discrimination, you can say, where uh, if the poor goes, uh, he uh, he doesn't charge him immediately. They oh, write okay. it down. Then he, they can uh, get the healthcare uh, services at very uh, nominal rates. But when it comes to the catastrophic expenditure, oh. certain surgery, certain treatments for tuberculosis or say uh, cesarean cancer and there are many problem. other diseases. So then it becomes a big problem when there is inpatient service that is required, then borrowing, uh, withdrawing from care, all these problems start. So that is the main area of concern according to me. Now, uh, the uh, certain uh, health insurance uh, schemes which were introduced under the public domain were mentioned over here but you have already mentioned the problems we are facing uh, with those kinds of insurance system, the problems of information asymmetry, documentation, and so on. So that is the second concern where hospitalization is required, then uh, the poor suffer the most, okay? Uh, the third area of concern is of course, uh, uh, in terms of availability, accessibility, and also quality. Now. Uh, when you talk about quality, if you don't invest enough in the public health infrastructure, then the quality is going to deteriorate uh, day by day, okay? And uh, uh, that is also a, a concern which we have to address or the government has to address that you uh, need to have a model where uh, the empanelment of certain hospitals, etc., when it is taking place, 
there there has to be proper terms or uh, terms and conditions on the basis of which this impanel takes place and also the reimbursements to these impaneled hospitals should be done on time otherwise uh, mm -hmm. there'll be increasing tendency of uh, cutting down and uh, not giving proper services or just withdrawing from this kind of uh, contracts uh, by the private hospital. So there, there are certain issue, issues according to me. Uh, there was also mention of the uh, socioeconomic conditions and the health gradient. So a uh, social determinants of health as we call it. So uh, now also we see that there are several studies, not just in India, but outside India, where they have taken factors like education, income, uh, the occupation, and uh, uh, the rank that you hold, and uh, the race or the caste, okay, uh, which determines the health status of the people. So if these factors are still playing important role in determining the health outcomes, do we have uh, any strategy to address uh, these issues, okay? Otherwise, if we would have addressed these issues, then we wouldn't have found uh, disparities uh, uh, in health outcomes of uh, reserve category vis-a-vis -vis the general category or gender differentials in, say, uh, certain health outcomes uh, or regional dis uh, disparities that exist. Okay, uh, so regional. Uh, so we, when we talk about health policy, health policies are decided at the central level and the states are uh, uh, expected to adapt it, but you still find that there are huge differences. So uh, I feel this is, I, I think I can go on talking like this, but I feel that uh, public health uh, needs to be re-emphasized, okay? Because public health facilities can be a good gatekeeper. If public health, it is a Kerala model. If public health facilities are, are good, then maybe, uh, the requirements of uh, higher levels of care automatically reduce, okay? And that is going to play a very important role. Uh, uh, regarding the findings uh, uh, that uh, Lakshmi has presented, education, income, though income is a non-linear uh, non variable over here, plays important role. Uh, along with that age, that's also something that I think we, we have missed that older women uh, become more That's marginalized. Okay, so that also one needs to think about. Uh, and uh, uh, education, I think I have spoken. So these are the important uh, demographic uh, and social variables which need to be taken into consideration for uh, implementing any health policy or introducing health sector reforms. Okay, just the last point which I want to make, which I got to know recently, that why political economy also becomes important. Uh, I, I got to know that uh, uh, when uh, we talk about access, uh, the tribal women have uh, very limited access to healthcare uh, facilities. And uh, uh, they, in Maharashtra, there was a scheme which was introduced with some private player that you have an ambulance with uh, medicines, 108 medicines that used to go to various padas and pastis, et cetera. And uh, there was a good feedback of this kind of mobile van. Okay, I remember during my grandmother's time in 70s and 80s, there was this mobile van which used to come to our area also, which I don't see now. So it, this mobile van, the feedback was very good and uh, it, it could cater to maximum uh, health uh, uh, requirements or uh, whatever medical care requirements that the tribal women had. And it was within their reach because the ambulance used to come regularly. Unfortunately, when there was a change of government, this was stopped. So uh, this is a problem. When some good policies or schemes are there, uh, sometimes they're stopped without thinking of uh, the implications of arbitrariness. That is another concern in a country like India, where good policies need to be strengthened or continued. Uh, that doesn't happen. Yes. Thank you.
Yeah. Thank you, Professor Manisha, for bringing out this whole important debate about the health is a married good or should we leave it to the market? So, uh, and the harshness of the market because market is also socially constructed and you very rightly brought out that the intersectional vulnerabilities of caste and ethnicity and stigma, uh, which certain communities face. Like we saw that uh, Dr. Veena Vaswani, who is working among the transgender person, she said that none of their needs of with the menstruation or even pregnancy, if a transgender person is pregnant, uh, doctors are not ready to treat them. So they, the, so these are the kind of vulnerabilities and we need to take cognizance of this uh, intersectionality. And a uh, question of that uh, political economy is very important because both social infrastructure and physical infrastructure, but they are strongly interconnected with each other. So when it comes to supply side, leaving things to the market, I think is creating a very uh, harsh outcomes so far as the vulnerable population is concerned. And your point of accessibility, uh, first of all, availability, and I think Dr. Sujita told us that these things are available. India, Pakistan, and Philippines are the three countries who churn out highest number of health professionals. Uh, doctors, that super specialist, and uh, nurses, and uh, uh, paramedical professionals and technicians. But so, so we have a, a supply, but people are not able to access. So accessibility is very important, and the quality of services. If we leave it to the market, then I think it is uh, uh, even the quality of services supplied to the marginalized section suffers. So now I would like to have a wrap up round. And all of you will be given. First of all, Dr. Lakshmi Priya, there are there is there is question in the question box uh, where they are asking that did your respondent uh, access the Ayushman Bharat and what were their experiences? That is one. Uh, uh, and other discussants have also raised uh, questions. Uh, I think Dr. Shuchita has also. And my question is that that uh, because it's your age, your your sample was of eighteen to fifty nine. I think the major question which even Manisha raised is about uh, what happens to the elderly women and their health needs. No? So now you uh, now you can give your feedback and the way forward. Yeah, you have already given, but you can answer these questions and sum up your presentation. Ma'am, uh, as far as Ayushman Bharat is concerned, I just I had a, I had some questions on insurance. But then um, I did not go deeply into the insurance, like uh, what was their experience and all, I didn't ask them. But even to understand, even from, from the low-income groups, actually, uh, when I asked them about, um, I had to tell them insurance, then uh, I had to tell them about Bhima, then I asked them, do you know about uh, Rajiv Gandhi, Kuch card mila hai kya insurance health Bhima. So actually they were not very much aware about the insurance, but then they were they were asked, uh, they were said by their, some family members and their friends that, so that is how I understood uh, from them that uh, uh, this is so they did not know what is that, that whether it is Ayushman Bharat or whether it is uh, um, uh, I, what is the scheme also they didn't understand. So for higher income women, they had some of them had private insurance and also their husband's insurance they had and very few who were working in the higher incomes, they had their insurance also, some of them. So uh, I did not go deeply into the particular inch. So that is what one way forward I have way forward I have included that. No, and how would you see the example of Seva? Seva was the first one to start uh, Seva Vimo. That means uh, Seva insurance, uh, health insurance. Okay, and yes. Ayushman Bharat is inspired by Seva's yeah, experience. Yes, and yes. I think now several women's organizations, whether it's Amandesh Maila, Sarkari Mandli, in Maharashtra mm -hmm. or uh, Annapurna. So many yeah. clusters no, of women mm -hmm. and some of the uh, SHGs have also started their own uh, support system. Mm -hmm. So uh, why it works? Because in Seva it is working because uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, uh, members are very set, highly satisfied and yeah, they yeah. stand by each other. While when it, take, it is taken over by the state, you see so many. Ma'am, can I make local. one point over here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is regarding actually uh, the state insurance schemes which were existing. Like uh, in uh, uh, Maharashtra, there was Rajiv Gandhi, Jeevan Dai, yeah, Arun Dai, yeah, 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 and yeah. in other state yeah. also, they had their state insurance schemes. And then the when she collected the data, this Ayushman Bharat was just launched. So there were no uh, initiatives which were started by the government to 
promote this scheme in Maharashtra. So hardly people knew about the Ayushman Bhavar, Bhavar, but they knew about the Rajiv Gandhi, which Rajiv. was I think, Rajiv later Gandhi. on named mm -hmm. as Mahatma Phule. Yeah, Bhavar. Mahatma Jodhira Phule. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. of the change of the government. Yeah. Now, uh, the state, uh, many state insurance schemes were actually doing better, like Karnataka. Then uh, what Ayushman Bharat had to offer, yeah. because 0.00 something people take uh, insurance for 5 lakhs and all. That is, yeah. they actually claim uh, yeah, yeah, for yes. 5 lakhs and all. Most of the people have claims which vary between say 30,000 to 40,000 for those kinds of surgeries like removal of gallbladder or appendix and things like that. So mm -hmm. these 28 or 30 surgeries, all these state insurance uh, schemes were offering already. Okay. Correct. Unnecessarily a hype was made, sorry to say that. So <laughs> I don't know, we have to really evaluate Aishman Bharat. But yeah. as you said, micro, uh, some uh, so self-help groups uh, and uh, microfinance institutes have uh, taken this uh, area and uh, another student of mine who did her work in Delhi uh, slums, uh, she found that SHG is like SEVA, SHG yeah. model is working yeah. well for uh, yeah. giving the health insurance to their group members. Okay, yeah. so that uh, is a valid and a very important point. No, and even the experience of Delhi state that they have a Jenna clinic, no Jenna, and free transport for women in the afternoon. So I think that is no. also hard because their transport cost is reduced, then women will go. Uh, and that uh, in the afternoon, they will go to the clinic and you also have to uh, tweak the timings of the clinic according to women's uh, ability to reach. Ma'am, actually, even women from high families, uh, high family incomes, those who are unemployed and those who are having from husband's salaries very high, they were also asking like, uh, if you don't take the, if why should we pay for the premium? Because if we, if we, it is a waste if we don't right. fall ill. So I think that is that is still with insurance, any insurance, even life insurance or health insurance that is still there. Yeah. Why should we pay the? It is a waste to pay for the premium. So, so when you when you say high income, what is the income level you are talking of? Uh, my, the family income. Mm -hmm. Family income is uh, like more than uh, four lakhs. Okay. Four, three lakhs, four lakhs. That was that is very few were there, but then also I got and this high level, high income people were not ready to answer many of the questions. Yeah. So that was a great problem for me. But people from slum areas were inviting me, and they were calling their friends and relatives, and that was uh, yeah. That's okay. a very yeah. What so uh, me is uh, one point, like uh, the state insurance. I agree with Marisha. So Marisha, like uh, uh, it is really uh, um, uh, good for the women and particularly who are in the chronic uh, stage to get the surgery done. So it's, uh, here in Tamil Nadu, it's called CM Health Insurance, uh, Chief yeah, Minister. CM, yeah. and, uh, I only think that if any the insurance is connected to the PDS system. Then, because the awareness itself is a big uh, issue here, and even mm. if it is that they are not taking, so whether it is possible with the minimum premium possible, the state insurance scheme, the health insurance. So scheme you mean the way Andhra has done one rupee per day from the agriculture workers? So at the end of yeah. the year, you get three sixty five rupees, which allows you to a very facility yeah. worth fifty thousand. That was yeah. the I think Andhra has done. No, Andhra when well, yeah. Uh, the study Manchur. finds uh, so much gap, so that is very important. Like uh, you have to make people uh, that the teams reach the people. Yeah. Okay. Anyone, Dr. Chita, would you like to say something at the end to sum up? Yeah. Uh, well, it has been very exciting to listen to everybody's experience from the ground level. Uh, I think that uh, India is rich in its in her uh, experimentation. Uh, you take SEVA or SHGs or you take other experiment that you just uh, spoke of. I think it would be a great idea to understand the best practices of uh, you know various regions. And uh, of course, there will be various uh, variables why things succeed in a particular environment and why they don't in some others. Maybe trust is a very important factor in a large yes. number of cases, uh, yes. especially when you talk about yes. SEVA. Yes. Trust is and commitment is a very strong factor. 
Uh, yeah, so so both these health and education, the social infrastructure that we call, I think they cannot uh, they cannot work unless and until there is a strong commitment and trust. And uh, just yeah. now you spoke of also the Delhi government uh, initiatives, small small initiatives to improve the uh, the the simply the sense of well being and. Uh, you know, overall, when the overall well-being is good, then then that's when you begin to think that, okay, I want to be a little more healthier than what I am today. You know, next year, I want to be a little more healthier. So that, that whole desire to become a better version of yourself, that is where the spirit of health is, I think. Uh, thank you very much. Very well said. Well said. Well said. Yeah. I think uh, we are, uh, India is also debating recently the public health bill, which was uh, framed in 2017. And recently there is a resurgence and discussion. I think Lakshmi attended also. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi attended. Now, yes, yes. final word to Dr. Lakshmi. Can you wrap up the discussion? Uh, this, uh, this was actually a very good opportunity for me to... Uh, <clears throat> to listen to uh, Suchita ma'am, Mani Mekre ma'am, and Vibhuti ma'am, and Manisha ma'am. Uh, the experiences, uh, the studies which they discussed were, uh, and the reports, I, I would like to go through the reports, ILO report, and the studies which uh, ma'am, uh, Mani Mekre ma'am was also uh, referring to. So uh, I would like to thank uh, IMPRI for this uh, opportunity, and I... Mm -hmm. I, th I thank uh, Vibhuti ma'am. Vibhuti ma'am suggested uh, my name for this uh, talk. And I thank uh, Professor Manisha ma'am for guiding me and supporting me. Uh, without his, her help, this thesis would have been possible through the tough times of COVID and uh, other uh, problems. Then I thank uh, Suchita ma'am and Mani Mekele ma'am for giving such good uh, suggestions. And uh, uh, this, is, um, this was a very good opportunity for me also. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lakshmi Priya. And I think uh, uh, this is a very important discussion when India is debating uh, public health bill, okay, after the two years of experience yeah. of pandemic, uh, which are now increasingly becoming endemic. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Suchita Krishna Prasad, Dr. Mani Meklai, Dr. Manisha Karne, uh, I thank you from bottom of my heart. And I would like to conclude today's session by saying that as per the WHO, the right to health must be enjoyed without discrimination on ground of stress, age, ethnicity, or any other status. No discrimination and equality requires uh, states to take steps to redress any kind of a practices or whether and any kind of policies which are not allowing access to health to large majority of population. A human rights-based approach to health provides a set of clear principles for setting and evaluating health policy and service delivery and targeting discriminatory practices, uh, which are exclusionary also, and unjust power relations that are at the heart of inequitable health outcomes. And I think I have today's panel is also brought out the social determinants which are uh, hampering women from accessing the quality health care. So in pursuing a right-based approach, health policy, health strategies, and health programs uh, should be designed explicitly to improve enjoyable enjoyment of all people to right to health. And I think as Dr. Shudhya said, that the question of feeling of being of wellness is very, very important. It is not only the health, but health and wellness. So mental and physical health are extremely important, and they, women need to have access to that. And uh, core principles and standards of right-based approach are very, very important to be followed by the nation states. So I think today's was a very, very rewarding discussion. And I request IMPRI team to take over. Thank you. As we have come to the end of this enriching special talk on a socio-economic analysis of health-seeking behavior, of women in an urban area with special reference to their employment status as a part of our series, The State of Gender Equality, Hashtag Gender Gap. I, Nana, researcher at Empiry, would like to formally propose a vote of thanks on behalf of Empiry Gender Impact Study Center, GISC, 
at Impri Impact and Policy Research Institute, New Delhi. We would like to express our gratitude to Professor Vibhuti Patel for chairing today's session, the eminent speaker, Dr. Lakshmi Priya, our esteemed discussant for enriching deliberations, Professor N. Mani Meklai, Dr. Suchita Krishna Prashad, Professor Manisha Karne, for taking out their precious time and enlightening deliberation. And of course, we thank our audience here on Zoom or on Facebook Live for attending and participating in the session. We are grateful if you are watching us later on YouTube or listening to us on our various podcasts or reading our publications. I hope that you continue to tune in future to our entry hashtag web policy talks. Thank you once again, and I wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.